Welcome to another archery blog video. Today we're looking at the Eastern ACE arrow. So what can I tell you about the Eastern ACE arrow? Well, it's a four millimeter uh, aluminium carbon arrow. Now it's got a high strength carbon fiber on the outside, which is bonded to a 7075 alloy core. Uh, it's got a straightness of plus or minus 0 0.0015. And it has a weight tolerance of plus or minus uh, half a grain. The ACE is also a barrel design and um, we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. And um, finally it has various components which are sold separately and we'll have a look at all the components towards the end of the video. So let's talk a little bit more about barrel shafts. So in the late 1980s, Jim Easton devised a method to improve on the parallel design and he created a barreled aluminium carbon shaft, which became the ACE. It was introduced in 1987 and used by Jay Bars to win the 1988 Olympic Games, as well as to set multiple world records of the time, some of which actually lasted more than 20 years. By making the rear half of the shaft less stiff and much lighter in mass than the front or the centre of the arrow, clearance for finger shooters is improved from recurve bows. Now this characteristic also um, makes small variations in finger release much less of a problem. Uh, by shifting the, the shaft balance point forward, um, front of centre balance is improved, which allows for improved wind performance from the arrow shaft as well. Now it's much more difficult to build a barrel shaft uh, with excellent tolerances than either a parallel or a single uh, tapered shaft and there's a tremendous amount of investment in technology and considerable experience is needed to successfully build uh, such arrow shafts consistently. So that could be one reason why the uh, ACE and X10 are usually uh, cost more money. So what do I think are the Eastern ACE pros? Well, it's a great quality carbon aluminium arrow. Um, it sits kind of second in line uh, when it comes to recurve archers anyway. Number one is the kind of X10 arrow and number two is the kind of ACE arrow. Now it's got a barrel design, as we've said before. So it's a very light arrow. So it's great for sight marks and speed as well. So you will find that if you move from say an AC C arrow or an aluminium arrow that your sight marks will improve if you move to an ACE arrow. Uh, it's a great all-rounder arrow. It's great for target archery outdoors and indoors, although you may find it used more outdoors. And it's also used quite a lot for recurve field archery as well, especially by the professionals who seem to uh, quite like the ACEs. Obviously they probably don't want to lose expensive X10s so they go for the slightly cheaper ACEs. Uh, I've also said it again here on several of my videos actually that carbon wraps are also very easy to pull out of targets on a wet day, uh, more so than aluminium anyway when I hear kind of squeaky aluminium arrows coming out of uh, Dinage targets. So they're easy to um, pull out of uh, targets. And there are lots of spines. There are 15 um, ACE arrow spines. And again, there are lots of different knock manufacturers. So if you don't kind of quite like the, or get on with the Eastern uh, knocks, then you can get other knocks from uh, manufacturers such as uh, Biter or Boning, etc., etc. So here we have the spine chart for the uh, Eastern ACE. There are, so there are 15 arrow spines on here, starting at the top with a 370 and going down to the 1250. Now the shaft weight grains per inch GPI uh, starts at the top at sort of 7.9 and goes down to kind of 5.1 at the bottom there. And the great thing about the uh, four mil ACE is that you will see at the end when we talk about components also is that there's only one um, break off point that's produced now from 2021 20, onwards for the ACE. So you won't get confused by getting different points like you may have done previously with the ACC range. So what are the Eastern ACE cons? What's bad about them? Not a lot really, to be honest. The only downside really about them is that the, the cost. They're a mid price point, but they're definitely not the cheapest arrow out there. You have to purchase them in 12s, although I have seen them sold in fours and singly. Eastern though say it's not really up to them. It's really the archery retailers who decide if they want to split the batches and sell them singly. Um, although Eastern did say 
that they don't recommend uh, you buying them out of the original batches. Now you may have seen a see the shaft descriptor on the side of the ACE shafts. Now this is mostly numbered um, one C1 to C5, but definitely the most common anyway. So most top end Eastern uh, arrows carry a weight coding. And then this appears as the C number on the shaft, such as the C1, C2, C3. Now, after the shafts have been made, they're carefully weighed and sorted into batches to ensure that you get a dozen shafts that are as close in weight as possible. So when a production run of many thousands of arrows is created, each arrow shaft is individually weighed after final spine tuning and the entire population of the arrow shafts can be charted for weight. Now, typically there's about a five to six grain total spread from the lightest to the heaviest among a thousand, well, amongst thousands of arrows in a given run of a given size. And this is subdivided into less than one grain increments for assignment to a specific code and even finer graduations for each individual dozen. So all um, ACE and X10 weight codes cover a total spread of 1.5 grains. And then all packaged ACE and X10 shafts are held to a weight tolerance of plus or minus half a grain uh, in that package. So it's easily possible for an archer to mix shafts from two adjacent weight codes with no effects. So um, you could put a C2 and a C3 together um, and shoot them, mainly because by the time you've cut the shafts, applied the fletching, added some glue, the points, and perhaps an arrow wrap, um, the fine distinction in weight between one group uh, and the other is kind of blurred a bit. So I've been told that in reality, a three grain spread is undetectable by even the highest level archer. But what you may also find is there's less variation in the C numbers than there previously was. That's mainly down to the manufacturing process getting better and better. So you may see less C numbers out there nowadays than you used to. But if you're looking to add to a set um, that you've already got and you ask for, say, outliers like C1s or C5s uh, or various numbers, you may have to wait a little bit longer to get those because they may not be produced as often. And it's also important to ask a seller, if you're buying sort of used or secondhand arrows, it might be worth asking what C numbers are actually in the batch that they're selling in those arrows because they could have a, ma a mixed number, a mixed set of uh, C numbers in there and you don't really want that. So something to think about if you're sort of buying secondhand. Right, so finally, let's move on to the actual ACE components. Now, this is another image taken from the 2021 Eastern Archery target catalogue. Uh, as you can see, there's only one point now, whereas before there were several, and we'll look at the old points that have disappeared in a moment. The knocks have stayed the same though, and the pin knocks, it's just been some kind of renaming on those. So here's what the 29 or 2020 um, Eastern catalogue looked like for the components of the ACE. Now let's just um, compare the two just to see what's kind of missing. So you can see here that the knocks are the same. And the deep six four mil knock has kind of been renamed to the four mil microlite knock. It looks the same knock to me. And the main difference really here is the point. So we've gone from a one piece point that's now disappeared. And the ACE insert that I actually use has also disappeared now from the lineup. That was quite useful. Um, I actually bought mine second hand, so they came with them already in, so I didn't choose them on purpose, but I found it really uh, useful to have different screwing points because I chose different, I, I did pr try out different weights just to see what they were like before I settled on a certain weight. But there was also disadvantages to them that they did kind of come unscrewed sometimes and I was always checking them on the line before I shot. I did find that you could put a little bit of string wax in there and tighten them up or that you, if you wanted to, I didn't do this, but you could put a little bit of sort of hot melt, hot glue in there as well and to, to make them stick or to keep them tight. So the break off point is still with us, but it has changed. Uh, instead of there were several different sizes or three different sizes of break off point, there is now only one. So from this one break off point, you can go, you can start with 130 grains and go all the way down to 80. 
by breaking off sort of each individual section. And it's also got a nice kind of black looking kind of color onto the stainless steel as well. Another thing that didn't dawn on me straight away was that it looks like the old stainless steel point, uh, the point that comes out the end of the arrow, I think they were about an inch long. And the same with the X10 ones. But to me, um, the new point at the top, it looks a bit shorter than one inch that would kind of extrude at the end of the arrow. Um, so that could be a problem if you changed over to those new points and the tip was uh, shorter. You may find that your arrows are too short for you if you decided to swap over to the new uh, break-off points. So before we go, let's just have a look at my um, ACE arrows. So I'm shooting a 520 ACE arrow. I've got, as I said before, I've got the screw in um, insert points and I've got an arrow socks um, silver wrap on the back and then I'm using excess uh, left-handed wings because I'm left-handed. The kind of low profile recurve ones in silver uh, with some sparkly tape either end which was also supplied by arrow socks and then on the end I've got a pin uh, with a biter number one clear uh, knock on the end. Right, that's it for the video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, we've gone over the kind of history a little bit of the ACE and the component parts and the different spines. It is a brilliant arrow if you're looking to uh, buy one or upgrade from kind of an aluminium or an ACC arrow. As I say, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much. See you next time.